decision trees are graph theoretic or network trees where decisions are made at nodes. Logistic regression is our first step in learning how to make better decisions. It's going to be based on odds, especially when we look at information. Let's review some predictive modeling. A model is a probability distribution on a set of outcomes. Now typically our context will be these outcomes or classes for a classifier and they'll Y will be dependent on observations of features or factors. We'll use entropy, which is the information or uncertainty, depending on your perspective of a model. For instance, a decision tree was information gained, maximized at each node in the tree, and then the model was the entire tree. Let's revisit information gain also. It was the entropy of Y minus the entropy of Y conditioned on X and the conditional entropy of y given x is the expected value of the self-information of y given x. But that's just the joint self-information minus the self-information of x. So the conditional entropy of y given x is the joint entropy minus the entropy of x. And the information gain is therefore the entropy of x plus the entropy of y minus the joint entropy of x and y. Notice this is symmetric in x and y. So we're going to give it a new name. We're going to call it mutual information. So mutual information is information gain. It's the joint entropy of x and y subtracted from the sum of the individual entropies. It's symmetric in x and y. And the information gain Therefore, in y upon learning x is the same as the information in gain in x upon learning y. We have many different ways of writing this using our relationship between conditional and joint entropies. And remember, we're calling this now mutual information. Mutual information is non-negative. It's zero if and only if the variables x and y are independent. If y is completely dependent on x, then the mutual information is the entropy of y. So this is going to allow us to construct and apply the most informative models to big data. Remember what we mean by big data. It's complex, there's an underlying structure, and in particular the process producing the big data has the structure or topology, and ultimately we'd like to know what that is. Nearest neighbor algorithms can let us come up with models that actually can represent complex topologies. We have to assess them using metrics. We have to assess their structure, how real world they are. And then we also need to add everything that's not explained by the model should have in maximum entropy. Now these ideas are foundational to all of machine learning predictive modeling and we've carefully built them up to this point. However, for the remainder of the course, we're going to use these ideas indirectly or theoretically rather than explicitly as we did for decision trees and nearest neighbor algorithms. So why the switch? What's missing? Well, we have to address a couple of issues. So in the k nearest neighbors and decision trees, we saw the k nearest neighbors, every feature was used with equal weight. Just think of cosine similarity. Whereas in decision trees, there was only one feature used at each node. Not all features are equally important in determining neighbors, and decisions are often based on more than one feature. So we need to do some feature engineering. We need to resolve these two issues. We need to choose the right weight and number of the features in order to make our model. Now Andrew Inge said that this is the most important thing you do in machine learning is the feature engineering. So how do we make better decisions? Well our features or factors there's going to be a class uh, which is going to be capital Y and little y will correspond to capital Y so little y takes on the values that are in the class the outcomes 
Similarly, the x1 to xn are outcomes for the features. And we'll get better decisions at a node in a decision tree if we use all the features. So ideally, we'd like to have decision trees where decisions look like this. And of course, we're going to use 0, 1 values rather than true and false. Later, we'll see that we'll have more than one, but less than all the features. But for right now, our goal is to come up with a probability model for y, given the data of observations and a class. Now, in order to do this, we're going to maximize information gain like we did earlier. To begin with, though, let me say that the fourth V is for big data is veracity. We assume that we can use the feature values to actually predict the labels. In other words, we assume that the data isn't junk, that it can actually do what we ask it to do. Given that, the best model would be a function of the features that always you just crank it out, you know, go through the uh, definition of the function and out pops uh, the correct label for the class. That doesn't really happen. And in, in, we did had that case, that would mean that y would be completely dependent on the features. So we don't really ever expect to see that, but we can maximize the dependence of y on the features. That means maximizing the information gain across all the features and finding the model that achieves that maximum. Now we just want to get the general form for right now. So p here is going to be the probability that y is equal to 1. So if we have a binary classifier, then our entropy is negative p log p minus the quantity 1 minus p log 1 minus p. And we're using nats here, the natural logarithm. If you want bits, just divide everything by log 2. Now we don't know how y depends on the features, so we're just going to replace the conditional entropy by some completely unknown function h that's just going to stand in for the function we don't know. Our goal is to maximize information gain and that's what it's going to look like given our assumptions. So if the probability that y is 1 is p, the probability that y is 0 is 1 minus p. So we're going to work only with the p take the derivative and use the chain rule. So we're taking the derivative of h the entropy with respect to the p probability times that derivative minus the derivative of h. The maximum is going to occur where the derivatives are 0. So we take the negative of the derivative is equal to negative of all that stuff. We don't know what all that stuff is, so let's just rename it. After all, we're just going for the general form here. So we're going to call that beta. So now we want to look at what does this derivative look like? Well, we're going to use the product rule and the chain rule. So we use the product rule on both of the sums, or both the uh, factors in the sum. And of course the derivative of p is 1, derivative of log p is 1 over p, so on and so forth. We get some cancellation. And now we're going to get some additive cancellation, a plus 1 and a minus 1. And now we have the difference of these two logarithms. And that means that our general form for a model corresponds to the natural log of p over 1 minus p being equal to some as yet to be determined unknown function beta of the features. So we're going to drop the x1 to xn and just write the log of p over 1 minus p is beta. Because now we can solve for p. p over 1 minus p is e to the beta. And p is therefore e to the beta over e to the beta plus 1. Now let's multiply the top and the bottom by e to the negative beta over e to the negative beta. And that gives us 1 over 1 plus e to the negative beta. So models that maximize the information gain are either the natural log of p over 1 minus p equals beta, or equivalently, p is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative beta. Still don't know what beta is, but now we know the form that we want to use. So we're going to start working now to get a good estimate or model of beta.
because we know this is the form of the probability and we can focus now on how to get the beta. But before we do that, what is this p over 1 minus p? Well, it's the probability of an event b occurring, or if p is the probability of an event b occurring, then p over 1 minus p is the odds of b occurring. Now what do we mean by odds? So suppose b is an event or of a sample space, then the complement is b prime and it's the set of outcomes in S that are not in the set of outcomes b. And b prime sometimes would say is not b. We have n trials of an experiment and n here of course is very large. Then if we expect pn occurrences of b and qn occurrences of b prime, then we say that the odds of b occurring is p to q. Now what does it mean? It means the odds of p of p to q means that b is p over q times more likely to occur than b prime. And so a lot of times we'll write the odds of b as r colon 1 where r is this p over q. And that means a trial is r, tar, r times more likely to produce an outcome in b than it is to produce an outcome in b prime. For instance, if b is heads and a toss of a fair coin, then b prime would be tails. And if it's a fair coin, then we have one to one odds, a 50-50 chance of heads. Now notice that a one to one odds or a 50-50 chance, those are the same odds. So the odds for an event b to occur is the ratio of the probability that B occurs to the probability that its complement occurs. Or in conventional terms, the odds of B is the probability of B over the probability of B prime. So 3 to 1 odds means that the probability of B over the probability of B prime is 3 over 1, or that the probability of B occurring is 3 times more than the probability of B prime occurring. We can actually use that to figure out that the probability of b has to be 3 fourths because the sum of the probabilities has to be 1. So in terms of event b only, the probability of b prime is 1 minus the probability of b. So the odds of b occurring is the probability of b over 1 minus the probability of b. So odds are only defined, however, between 0 and 1 not including the 0 or the 1 for the probabilities. So if we let p be the probability of something happening, then the odds is p over 1 minus p. The log odds is the logarithm of the odds. So if p is equal to a half, there's only two outcomes, true or false, then the odds of b is 1, in other words 1 to 1 odds or 50-50 chance. The log odds is zero. Okay? In other words, uh, we don't see any change. The derivative with respect to p would be zero of the entropy. And remember, uh, maximum entropy occurs when we get a derivative of zero. So where does this lead us? Well, we have logistic regression. The best model is p equals 1 over 1 plus e to the negative beta, where p is a probability that y is 1. The simplest model is where b is a linear function of x1 to xn. And we're going to make the assumption, that is, that beta is equal to this linear combination of the x's. The w sub j are weights, and the w sub 0 is just a constant out there by itself. And then logistic regression is where the probability has this form. In other words, where we study these kinds of models. Our goal then becomes finding the best weights given the data. So what's the strategy for applying this as a binary classifier? Well, we have a probability model that maximizes information gain. We don't know what beta is, so the logistic approach is to assume that it's linear. And that will give us the logistic regression model that we can then use to predict the probability p that y is in class 1, where 1 minus p is the probability that y is in class 0. Uh, finally, last note, 
Often we call this log p over 1 minus p the logit of p.